So everyone can hear me. Um, nice to meet you. I'm Sam from Immersal. Um, says CRO. I do sales and business development here in Americas. So we're here today to talk about the power of Web AR and what that means for real world tracking. So a little bit about Immersal, if this wants to work, which it doesn't, which is fine. OK, so about Immersal, where are we from? Uh, we're from the lovely city of Helsinki in Finland. A little bit about the history. We were founded in 2015, and then our tech was picked up and we were acquired by Hexagon, and we're part of the Geosystems division since 2021. So we focus on cloud-based spatial computing, building of digital twins, and then we also focus on the localization of the devices inside any kind of mapped space. With Immersal Tech, you can transform any space, whether it be a room like this, a kitchen, or an entire city. We can transform that into a large digital twin with advanced localization features. On to the next slide. So about those accurate digital twins, how scalable? Like I said, I said we could do something city scale. Here I have an example of our feature point cloud. And this was a VPS for web. And it was also created to allow people to navigate through a shopping mall. So this here is a shopping mall called Tripler. Uh, down in Finland. It's about 85,000 square meters or 915,000 square feet. We map that with a combination of Leica's blk to go mobile as well as 360 camera, just to show you how diverse it is to map a space. We can use any kind of tech, as long as it has a camera and we can obtain the orientation. With the next slide, let's look towards recognizing the location. So here you can see the accuracy, the position, and the alignment. So we're incredibly precise. What does that measurement actually look like? How do we measure precision when it comes to digital twins? A lot of the time, it's millimeters. A lot of the times, it's centimeters, feet, inches, you name it. We like to measure it by angle of vision. And we're 0.1% of angle of vision when it comes down to accuracy. Now, that's quite key, because from long distances, we can see disparities in accuracy. If we're doing something on the Eiffel Tower, it doesn't really matter if it's a centimeter or a foot. If we're 400 meters away, we won't see it. So as a result, what we're able to do is we're able to get context and localization, and we're able to position that accurately and seamlessly and bring virtual elements into the real world. So the big news, uh, here we go. Um, Immersal has been primarily web-based with our Unity SDK. Immersal is now bringing web AR to the mass medium. Now, what's some of the benefits and what are we offering from our web AR? We're offering no third party dependencies. Everything's contained within Immersal. It works on iOS and Android and even Huawei devices. It's ideal for AR hotspots, small to medium size. We're not saying you should go out and map cities with it straight away, although that would be great. But small to medium indoor and outdoor locations. And you can map that seamlessly with the Immersal Mapper app, the map that everyone loves and keeps developing and developing and getting easier and easier. The VPS localization, now here's a key part, it happens on the device, which means we can contain the map size down quite minimally. There's no network traffic needed after the initial map has been loaded. So we're all good there. And it's delivered as a super easy and simple JavaScript, which is an ES6 module. And you can just utilize that and get cracking on with your web AR development. Now, here's some of the benefits. And these are the key things, right? So we want to enhance things like the user experience. We want accessibility and convenience. We want cost effect effectiveness. And we want scalability. And what we also want is improved engagement. Does anyone have any idea on how many devices there are in the world that can access web AR today? Anyone want to make a guess? 15 billion. So there's 15 billion devices in the world today that have browser access that can go ahead and access Web AR. How many of those are being utilized? That number's still unknown. What we're trying to do is we're trying to enable it, empower it, and scale it. Another part, cost effectiveness and scalability. Cost effectiveness, it's all, we all know it can be quite expensive to launch an augmented reality experience, especially if we're building in apps. If we can push things to the web, we get much more click-through, we get people activated, we get a lot more users, 
and it's also more cost effective to build. So here's some examples that Immersal has been working with. Great company around, around AR out of uh, Minnesota. So these guys here are building, quite arguably, some of the biggest augmented reality web AR in the world. They're pushing for fan experiences, so they're turning spectators into active participants inside the game. They have interactive fan engagements. They have shared stadium AR experiences. They have dynamic sponsoring activities. And they have seamless web access. Thanks to Immersal. Quick shout out. And uh, easy and cost effective integrations. So they're looking to empower tens of thousands of fans inside a stadium environment to access web AR, which I think is great. Another one of our friends, Zappa. So we've got a lovely message here from one of the co founders and CTO, Connell. So that's the saying that we're partnering with Immersal to bring VPS to the Zapworks platform. The combination of Immersal and our best in class VPS and Zappa's brand new world tracking for web and our fully featured content development environment, Mattercraft, it will enable the next generation of immersive content. So, another fantastic partner. So, if you're interested, I'll keep it short and sweet, if you're interested in getting early access to Immersal's web AR platform, you have my email address here, and you also have a connection to my LinkedIn. Please feel free to pop us over a message, and we'll gladly get you early access. So, with that being said, that's all from me, but what I'd love to do is I'd love to hand this over to Air Cards. Tavius, if you want to join us on stage, and uh, we can talk about some more use cases. Thank you. Hey, everyone. Good to see some familiar faces in the crowd. Thanks for coming out. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tavius, senior XR prototyping engineer at AirCards. And today, I'll be talking about three use cases of Immersal's VPS technology that we've deployed to our clients. But before I get into that, I would like to share a little bit about my philosophy as an AR developer. Uh, we are in the development track, after all. So. My core values for the future of AR include context. Context emphasizes the augmented of augmented reality, which should respond and react to the real world, going beyond just holograms floating in space. After asking who's the audience, you should always be asking what's the context? Where is this thing gonna happen? Then you can create a solid design for the digital content uh, to engage the real world. This scales from an AR postcard where the AR seamlessly blends into the printed graphic up to scene understanding APIs with semantic tagging of surfaces, uh, world meshing, which enables occlusion and uh, physics. And then we can keep going with custom computer vision and AI layers that also open up new opportunities to ground AR in its context. Then persistence. Persistence emphasizes the reality, where augmented reality should stay where and how you left it. If you change something in the physical world, you would expect it to stay there. And AR should do the same. The AR experiences we build will have significantly more impact when they do that and uh, can be relied on as persistent elements of our daily lives. So if I hang some art on my wall, some AR art, and then I bring my friends over and I want to show it, it should still be right there, no matter where I've been or if I've shut down my phone, restarted it, headset, what have you. And uh, world anchors and VPS systems allow for persistence today. Now, agency is the human element. It's the why behind augmented reality. So Jordan Weissman said it best in the, the Augies last night that it's not about the tech, it's about the people. And uh, people should be active participants in immersive media, should feel empowered to interact with the AR content. Uh, and when they do, it should respond, right? Combined with context and persistence, agency is a unique affordance that sets AR apart from other digital media. 
So I encourage you to think about these things, take them back to your own work, and build the future of AR. Now, let's get into some background on air cards. We're a global XR production studio dedicated to emerging technology, design, and immersive storytelling. Uh, we have team members and clients all around the globe. So as uh, the first full-time developer hire for the team, uh, I hope I can share a little bit of that background on how we got here. So AirCard started out um, making postcards and business cards, hence the Air cards. Uh, but then it didn't take long before clients were asking, well, what more can we do with this? Can we put a, a 3D model on that postcard? Okay, yeah, cool. Do we need the 3D model, or sorry, do we need the postcard? Can we just put it on uh, the table? Can we put it on the floor? And then it scaled from there, and all of a sudden we're making uh, games, multiplayer experiences, cross-platform, WebXR, AWE, booth activations, you name it. Then uh, one day I joined a briefing call for a new project, and we're talking about the feasibility of a 50-foot tall Yayoi Kusama painting her signature dots on the side of a Louis Vuitton flagship store. Uh, so things ramped up pretty fast. Uh, that was a new one for us. But first, pop quiz. All right, does everyone have their pencil? I hear there's a booth handing them out downstairs. But could everyone please raise your hand? Come on, come on, we're all here together. Now, keep your hand raised if your team has built a mobile AR experience. Keep your hand raised if your team has built a mobile AR experience with VPS functionality, mapping onto the real world. And lastly, keep your hand raised if you've built a VPS-enabled mobile AR experience that also ran on the web. All right, the, uh, the, the six of you, you're good to, you're good to leave. <laughs> but uh, the rest of you, you're in the right place. You can put your hands down, thank you. Um, so getting back to that story. The design agency Closer brought this one to us. Uh, and shout out to their brilliant creative team. They, uh, the brief called for a global takeover with location-based AR installations inspired by the art and brilliance of Yayoi Kusama, blurring the line between the digital and physical. This was a crazy ambitious project, uh, bringing AR to Louis Vuitton, uh, their flagship stores, pop-up art installations uh, across six different countries. We wound up building four different mini games, each with four different levels, and all of that unlocked 81 different collectibles. And uh, in the first week alone, we had 100,000 users. Uh, but how did we pull that off? Well, it's late 2022, and uh, our partnership with Immersal begins because of this guy in the center slide there. That's Aurelio. And at the time, Aurelio was a brand new hire to air cards. It's his first week on the job, and he has some experience in photogrammetry, he's a great developer, uh, and what do we do? We send him off to Tokyo to go scan stuff. Now, uh, he's out there scanning the Tokyo Tower, and we realize that the text just isn't going to scale to meet the needs of our client. And uh, to be completely fair, no VPS solution was perfect at the time. Um, many of them had UX lift for users, or it was a long and involved scanning process, uh, limited scanning range, it's limited to a native app, or it's limited to just one boxed-in experience entirely. So Aurelio happened to catch wind of Immersal in the first place and saw a Twitter prototype of somebody using their REST API with 3JS, and it ran on Android. So if somebody out there had made it work, then we could make it work for us. We scheduled a call and uh, got cracking on it. Now, after a bunch of pair programming sessions, uh, back and forth testing, expanding the API documentation, and calibrating uh, all the different cameras across so many different devices, we had our working solution for landmark scale, bespoke VPS on the web. And uh, speaking of persistence, Aurelio has it. And in my opinion, he is the reason that this tech is coming to market today. So uh, if you'll join me in a round of applause for my incredible teammate, please. Thank you. So with the tech working, what else have we done with it? We've worked with Unilever's ice cream brand, Walls. 
and uh, built upon previous scavenger hunt experience, projects we've made to uh, scale things up, way up. So Walls started out with some CGR marketing videos to generate buzz, and then went beyond just those clips to make incredible, real AR transformations of landmark buildings. This process began with context. Our creative direction uh, team paired landmarks with the most appropriate variety of ice cream. Uh, so for example, what you see here is the Estea de Luz uh, in Mexico City, used as the popsicle stick for the twister. Uh, this was another multi-city campaign, and uh, we took our learnings from Louis Vuitton, Kusama, and developed an in-house content management system, the CMS, to allow for off-site AR calibration um, using just the immersal scan data. So this was our turnkey to scalability, because now we can simply provide a spec for a freelance photographer, have them go out, shoot the location, give us that data, upload to immersal system, and then distribute that workload of aligning the AR content uh, amongst the AirCards team with a simple back-end web interface. One great thing about Immersal's VPS solution as well is that it plays nicely with other tech stacks. So um, here we can see that these uh, brand promos and UGC content are recorded with the 8th Wall Media Recorder. And in uh, Kusama, we also used 8th Wall's tech for uh, face filters and other pieces of our mini games. So Walls is still an ongoing project. Keep an eye out for a giant ice cream near you. Lastly, let's take a look at another one closer brought to the table. Uh, this is an activation with Nike. They wanted to augment the Palais Brognard for the Paris Olympics. And we created six different AR scenes. Each of those is a bespoke, larger than life, 12 foot tall statue that Nike installed on site, highlighting a depicted Olympian. Um, we have LeBron James in there, Shikari Richardson, Mbappe. And uh, this one required some agility because the statue installation was only finished uh, like two days, maybe one day before the press event. Things happen fast at agencies. And before, uh, while, while that was happening, I'm writing up a, a node graph for hologram shader, but Aurelio is boots on the ground handling the scanning uh, with his established expertise. So we delivered at scale and on time faster than ever before. And now you'll be able to as well. So hopefully that provides some insights on how you can use Immersal's Web AR and VPS to bring your projects to life. Uh, these are hands down some of the coolest projects that I've ever worked on, and I can't wait to see what's next. If uh, you have any ideas on that, feel free to scan the QR code, reach out to AirCards, and get in touch. Thank you, everyone. Now, yeah, we have a bit of time here, so we can open it up to Q&A. Yeah, thanks for an awesome session, and we have time for a few questions, too. So if there's any questions about AR, their companies, or anything, don't be shy. Yeah, Sam, want to pop up? Yeah, I can. I'll come up with you. So any questions? No. None? That's fine also. We can also give you some time back. Uh, sure. Yeah. Probably the last question you want to hear, but have you guys done any integration with this type of stuff with more native applications that are not web-based? Yeah, absolutely. Huh? So we can also provide web-based applications as well. So we have a Unity SDK as well um, that you can utilize, and you can bring things to apps as well. It doesn't have to be web. Very cool. Thank you. OK, now we've got the first question out of the way. <laughs> Any other questions? I have a question. Sure, let's go. I was wondering if you have any additional resources or c recommendations as to platforms to host web, web AR experiences. Hmm. Um, a lot of where we host is just through AWS. It's all web stack, so wherever you can deploy an application, uh, Immersal's SDK plugs in on top of that. Nice. And I think one cool thing to mention, which I probably didn't mention in my part, um, Immersal has the ability to work um, in both private sector 
pushing to public, private, as well as on-premises solutions. So if you are working with, or you're an agency that's looking to work with uh, quite uh, strict rules and regulations about where data can and can't be stored, uh, that's quite a key place uh, that we can play a part in. Further to that, Immersal doesn't kind of uh, retain any of the rights to your data. We push that back to you. So you have the ability to do what you want with it, when you want with it. You can license it, you can sell it, we don't mind. So there's no kind of approval process when it comes down to the mapping. That mapping can happen on device, on the cloud, and you retain the rights to it. So it opens up a few more doors. Amazing. Any other questions? We have time for maybe two more. While you're thinking, I can riff on that right there. Sure. The, uh, one of the reasons we went with Immersal in the first place is because of that privacy. So we were able to have something scanned that wasn't being uploaded to a global map right away. Uh, a lot of what we're working with is short one week, one month installations that a public art piece is going up and we want to activate that, but then it's gone. So we don't want that to stay as a, a point on the map that other people might discover later. And um, especially brands, storefronts in malls and such, they want to make sure that all of that data is strictly kept within the, their own IP. Yes. Um, I'm just curious, have you, so I saw the UGC marketing. Do you think that was like the most effective type of marketing for this work? And then also have you gamified any of the marketing that you guys, for any projects you guys have produced? Yeah, um, I think just the sheer scale of it enables people to discover it. You have a vinyl QR code on the, the sidewalk somewhere, and then that leads you through the instructions of, yeah, point it up at the building and check that out. Um, and then that uh, wow factor just encourages people to record more than they normally would. And you can definitely create mini games and have those anchored very well with Immersal as well. So it completely depends on what you wish to create. So Immersal is quite an open platform and it allows you to play with what you want to play with. And that's the beauty of augmented reality. It's, it's whatever you kind of think you can create. And we want to empower that placement in the real world. So yeah, you can create what you like. Any other questions? Yes. Yes. Could you expand on the persistence and uh, in reference to digital twins, how that would scale and then what kind of coordinate system you, you would do that? Like let's say you had a, um, an asset, a company that holds multiple real estate assets mm -hmm. uh, and they're spanned maybe internationally or whatever that might be. To what level could you establish persistence when it applies to maybe digital twins uh, if you were documenting physical assets and, uh, and creating AR experiences around those? So there's multiple ways that we can do it, right? So um, like I said prior, it's, um, we have the ability to launch your own service as well. So you can contain everything on our service and they can scale with a load balancer as and when you need to use them, but we can keep them persistent also by just keeping them live inside a server. So it depends on what you really desire. Um, with the maps, they can be loaded onto individual devices or they can be connected via the cloud. So they can only be called upon when you really want to use them. So it's up to you how you wish to keep them persistent. Um, any other comments from you from persistence? Um, yeah, I suppose with the real estate market, things change, buildings are torn down, new ones put up. Um, one of the, the big benefits of working with Immersal is that you can update those scans. Um, common pain point is it worked in uh, the bright sunny weather we scanned it in, but now it's overcast or it's nighttime and those same feature points don't show up in the same way. So we'll go back and we'll scan a couple of times in different lighting conditions and merge those scans together into one super map that is referenced. Um, so that map data is flexible and you can go in, you can update it, you can revise it, and you can make sure that it's effectively version controlled to whatever you want uh, that scan to respond with. Amazing, well, that's it for time, but thank you for a really insightful session, and I hope you all use their companies as resources in your own development journey.